So welcome back to the second section in our motivation part. So in this section, uh, I'll go nuts because simply I'll be talking to you about my favorite approach to declarative problem solving in a nutshell. And you, you may now wonder whether it's it's about the nutshell or it's about my favorite approach, but that's easy, right? Okay, let's get started. So it is called answer set programming, as you may have guessed actually by choosing to listen to me actually. And I'll often or more or less throughout uh, this course abbreviate this with ASP. So ASP is one approach for declarative problem solving, but I'd argue it has quite some cute features as hopefully you'll, you'll see on this slide, even though it's a little bit hand-waving because it's talking about the approach without you ever having seen it so far. Okay, so where is ASP from? I think that's the first question. And some of them can say ASP has four mothers, databases, notably deductive databases, logic programming, knowledge representation, and notably non monotonic reasoning, and after all, satisfiability solving. One distinction between these four approaches is actually, just to repeat my most preferred word, uh, that the first three, databases, logic programming, and non-monotonic reasoning, all deal with a closed world assumption. Or the idea is how to fill incomplete information with, let's say, defaults or, or other conventions that we have adapted. The easiest case is databases, where the idea is, well, if something is not in a database, so it's unknown, you just set it to false. And I think we all suffered from this, simply we were not in the list or, or, or somehow, and it's unknown whether we belong on this list or not, but it is interpreted as, no, you're not on the list, no, uh, it's false. Okay, anyway, unlike this, satisfiability solving more or less is the mother that gave us the technique to have a very to have very, very effective systems, and we'll see this uh, throughout uh, the later, later, later parts. So, these are more or less our, uh, our inspirations, our sources, our roots, and in a way that's the first take-home message, that you can view, actually view ASP as a combination of database techniques, logic programming, uh, syntax, semantics, knowledge representation, uh, and satisfiability solving. So this first equation is, I think, is the first cool take-home message about ASP. So what is ASP good for? Well, I just say this now with a technical term because I'll illustrate this in a sec. It's, it's good for solving knowledge-intense combinatorial optimization problems. So you may optimize or not, but the idea is knowledge-intense actually is one of the big keywords in, 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 or unique selling points, if you like, about ASP. It's really good to formalize knowledge and make this knowledge executable. Now, but what is a combinatorial problem or even an optimization problem? Well, actually, you may have done one already today, namely Sudoku. So it's, these are problems where you do many decisions under constraints. So think of Sudoku, right? You have these little place there where you have to put a digit, a digit between one and, 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 and nine, and you have to make a decision which one to put. But this happens under constraints because the same digit cannot appear in the same line, in the same column, or in the same sub, uh, sub-square, more or less, right? So this is very typical. But you know, this is typical in the sense that it's not only to have fun with. Imagine a timetable at school or at university, or a shift plan at a, at a company, right? So you assign a person to a shift, then this person cannot do a, a similar or a same shift, or an overlapping shift, right? Then once you have assigned all shifts, uh, you cannot assign other people. And the same with a timetable at school. You assign a teacher to a class, and this teacher cannot teach at the same time. So you more or less have to make choices and all this under constraints. And this is a very prominent problem class in computer science. These are combinatorial problems and they have varying complexity. The most prominent one, of course, is, are the, is the class of MP problems. Anyway. So I already anticipated or gave you more or less a sneak preview on the examples. So Sudoku is, 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 is one, but configuration, technical diagnosis, music composition. So we had a, we had a very gifted um, student who was studying music and computer science, and she actually wrote uh, a music composition system based on ASP. And if you go to, to, our, to our GitHub site, potasco.org, you can even go the project and, and look at the project and perhaps even extend it if you feel like it. Then planning, system design, timetabling, right? So the, all these are problems, uh, are problems that, that are 
that have combinatorial problems and often need also optimization on top. So optimization then simply means that among legal solutions you choose the better one. So one with less cost or one where your most preferred color was chosen or alike. So you may say, okay, this is all a bit abstract. What about industrial problems? And yes, there are some. So actually, I only give you a list. There are actually a couple of papers that survey industrial applications of ASP. Feel, feel free to, well, to send me a message or just to Google them and you, you'll find them. So one of the most uh, say distributed applications is that actually our systems are shipped with Debian and Ubuntu as package configuration managers. So this is not the, they are not used as, uh, uh, um, as the default, but once things get a bit more complicated, you can choose, you can choose them to configure your Linux box. Uh, the next one is, is an Oxera call routing, is an application from our friends at the University of Calabria, where it was about uh, somebody calls, you see more or less who calls, you see the profile, you can then map, map the person to an, an, an expert and and come up with a, with a schedule for, for, for these guys. Then radio frequency auction, I will come to this in a sec. Then also our friends at, at Calabria did workforce management at, the, at Europe's largest harbor, the Geo Tauro, if I pronounced this correctly, where the idea is how do you put together teams that have to do certain, certain work on the, uh, on, on the harbor, right? People that can, I don't know, have a certain education, certain skills and so on and so forth. Well, Siemens is, is using ASP quite a lot, and one of the most uh, challenging problems they face is the partner units problem, but there are many more, like in particular configuration problems that they're looking at. Actually, product configuration was the very first um, application of, uh, of ASP at the University of Helsinki, where also the, the, the first ASP systems come from. I think I mentioned LPAS and S model at the beginning. And they actually configured tractors and uh, oil drilling heads. So, Pretty particular things, but this was the first spin-off actually that was using ASP. This was at the very beginning of this millennium, I guess. And finally, even the army uses it for, for risk assessment. So what I found interesting is this radio frequency auction. Well, our system class, our solver was used there, but what is what I find really interesting is look at the budget, right? This was more or less uh, the auction yielded 20 billion US dollar and it was conducted by a US federal uh, department. And imagine, they just took a solver from a university off the shelf and used it in such a critical, in such a critical application. And there the application was more or less, they wanted to, to buy frequencies from radio stations and then resell them to radio stations, but also to, to, to telephone companies and clean out, clean out the, the, the spectrum. But it, this is just so great. And, you know, we didn't even know about it. We just learned about this afterwards. After all, our systems are open source, like Linux. People can download them, and many people actually do without us knowing. And, but this is an application that actually, you can imagine, it made me very proud. So, and that's fantastic for the whole, for the whole not only for our research group, but also for the whole community that such, that's the systems were regarded as being so robust. So this is to tell you that the, the systems we are we are doing are not are not at a at a prototypical state anymore. They are they are used in real industry for real, well in this case big money. Okay, so uh, what are ASP's disting distinguishing features? Again, uh, this is a bit hand waving because you haven't seen ASP and it joins a little bit the benefits that I was showing before. So what is the first unique selling point? It, it's high level and pretty versatile modeling language. This is something that you don't find that easily with other, uh, with other approaches for solving the combinatorial problems. It, has, it shares the high performance solvers with, with, the, with the satisfiability testing community. And as I mentioned before, um, in the benefits, you can solve problems with tens of millions of variables. So the solvers are very effective. And last but not least, you have qualitative and quantitative optimization. So you can talk about numbers, but also about symbolic preference, and you can combine them in a, in a, in an in, in, in an in an arbitrary, but in an yeah in, a, in an unlimited way. You can just form expressions over them. So and meanwhile, there's also an industrial impact. The first actually who had a spin-off uh, dealing with ASP and 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 around ASP systems, that were again uh, the group at the University of Calabria around the DLV system. And meanwhile, also in Potsdam, we have Potasco Solutions. And in case you want to do an internship, you always have the choice. Come to our research group, come to our company, or, well, go somewhere else, of course. 
And uh, if, if one looks at it, it's a bit sad somehow that we, we have an increasing interest in, 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 um, in contracts and all that, but it's mainly large companies. And actually this technology is so simple that even smaller companies can use it even, even for, for, for small purposes, right? But it's really hard to get in touch and convince people that this is at this stage. Okay, great. I hope you liked my little nutshell and me going nuts about my most preferred toy. So next, actually, I, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the history of ASP. But, well, stay tuned and see you later. Bye.